the Dyer. Strength in overwhelming numbers, unwavering devotion to power, and victory at any cost. For the glory of the Dyer, Kana bends the will of everything around her on her quest to destroy the Radiant and their priestess, her mother. Some are fit to rule. Most live to obey. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Card Spotlight. Today we will be taking a look at Kana, Priestess of the Dyer. She is a versatile hero with plenty to talk about, so let's jump straight in. Born originally of the Radiant, Kana's frail form was not fit for the crusade her mother Prelix, Priestess of the Radiant, was amassing, so she set out on her own to find power. Finding salvation in the Dyer, Kana promised them a mighty army in exchange for power. With this new purpose in life found, Kana now only sees Prelix and her forces as a mob of zealots and swears to destroy her mother and everything the Radiant stands for. Are you ready to die, mother? You threw away your future! And for what, Kana? To spite me? The ancients demand blood, the price only the strong are willing to pay. Kana, the now appointed priestess of the Dyer, has also returned the favor and given others salvation. Rygor Stonehoof, born of the mountain, has spoke about his confused self and lack of purpose that changed when meeting Kana. He spoke of the way Kana gave him direction, understanding of man and companionship when no one else would. Most importantly, Rygor said that Kana gave him his new name, Earthshaker. You gave me purpose, Kana. And for that, I will always be in your debt. I won't fail you. This new revelation is startling for those that are familiar with Earthshaker and Dota, and shows that Kana is not only a warrior, but also a leader. The Dyer rewards its allies. A blue hero, Kana has only two attack, which is below average for someone from the House of the Wise, and will cause her to struggle at hero or creep destruction. However, such a low attack value is compensated by your high health of 12, which is the most health out of any of the blue heroes. Possibly so to ensure that her passive ability has a chance to get some use. Bringer of Conquest is Kana's passive ability and reads, The random allied melee creeps are deployed into Kana's lane. This, much like her Radiant counterpart Prelix, messes with the creep spawning mechanic that happens after the shopping phase. Kana, with her mind controlling powers, possesses the creeps to come to her lane, and Prelix summons new ones to fight for her side. Altering where your creeps go will be an important factor to consider when you are picking the location to deploy Kana. On the offensive, effectively swarming a lane opens you up to massive damage output with the help of green cards like Emissary the Quorum and Arm the Rebellion. On the defensive, Kana's ability can help you plug up holes on your board, soaking any incoming tower damage. When positioning Kana, remember that your random melee creeps will only go there and nowhere else. If the opponent decides to abandon the lane that she is in, there will be little you can do to provide assistance elsewhere. Kana's signature card is possibly one of the most explosive spells in the game. Prey on the weak, a 4 mana spell, summons a Hound of War, a 2-1 creep, for each damaged unit. This counts both sides of the board when checking for damaged units, so a late game board combined with effects like Ignite or Diabolic Revelation will generate a lot of power for such a low relative cost. Throw in an Emissary the Quorum or a Mist of Avernus and the enemy tower or even the Ancient will be down in no time. Prey on the Weak is an incredible finisher and defender. The closest effect that has a similar output is Dimensional Portal which has the benefit of outputting a set minimum of creeps, which is unlike Prey on the Weak, but also has the downside of a set maximum. Kana and her signature are highlighted in decks that make good use of her reliable creep output. Blue-Green Combo wants Kana on the flop, to begin generating a powerful lane immediately, so they have a safe lane to potentially play Incarnation in and dump their hand securing the win. This deck also features Ogre Magi, which gives your Prey on the Weak a chance to be refunded, letting you repeatedly swarm the board even further. Other decks like Black Kana are instead built around her ability to handle lanes on her own very well, pairing her with cards like the Oath to effectively generate two 6-4 creeps every round. This deck has Kana on the turn, meaning you will have a round to assess the board before choosing where to deploy her. Unsupervised Artillery is a great inclusion in this deck, as Kana's ability will make it hard for your opponent's units to become unblocked, netting you an additional 4 free damage every round. Kana is an incredibly versatile, powerful hero, proven by her inclusion in all kinds of constructed decks from control to combo to aggro. She is an auto pick and draft thanks to her high health pool and great signature card that pairs well with a myriad of strategies. For these reasons, she has been consistently the third highest cost hero to buy in the market, and it's clear why. Kana is a standout hero. Once I was weak, no longer. That's all for this episode of Card Spotlight. Check out our other spotlights if you would like to see more and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.